with that beautiful note, let us continue our healing work with the healing circle. Let us open our hearts to the Christ power, wisdom, and love, as together we call upon the angels of healing to draw close. We come into the soft radiance of this love as we hold the healing light of the Christ star over our world and the soul of humanity and all kingdoms of life at this tender time in our Earth's history. We see this light permeating every atom. And particularly, we hold all the young people, our future, in this beautiful healing light. And with hearts full of love and gratitude, we give our grateful thanks. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Susan selected a wonderful reading from White Eagle's book on Divine Mother. And White Eagle said, in contemplation and meditation, you will always find more truth than our simple words can unfold. We dig, as it were, into a vault which has been closed and sealed, hoping to find lost treasure. It is noticeable how often Jesus imparted his most profound teaching to women. He withheld his deepest teaching from the high priests and rulers. Nor did he always choose to disclose the inner truths to his disciples. Indeed, indeed instead, he often chose women. And strange as it may seem to the worldly-minded, often women who were condemned by the world. For instance, he revealed the profound and glorious truth of the resurrection to Mary Magdalene, a woman looked down upon by many, yet Jesus chose her. And he also chose the woman at the well of Samaria again, an apparently worldly woman. Why did Jesus select such women? You will notice that he first tested the people, both men and women, to whom he imparted deep spiritual truth. He tested the disciple Nathaniel. Jesus exercised psychic power for the benefit of Nathaniel when he said he had seen him from afar, under a fig tree. Nathaniel was so overwhelmed with this that it filled his whole being. And in a similar way, Jesus tested the woman, the woman of Samaria. He spoke to her of her worldly life and the number of husbands she had had. He did not consider these facts to be of any importance, but he was impressed by the woman who had said to him, I know that the Messiah cometh, which is called Christ, and when he has come, he will tell us things. The heavenly things, she means, thus indicating that while her whole outlook might be more worldly, she was also a soul prepared and ready. Is that not often demonstrated? Are there not many so-called worldly women who have an unusual development of the intuition, women who know truth intuitively, who can understand divine wisdom 
in a flash. We should not, however, conclude that a material-minded man or woman necessarily lacks spiritual capacity, nor that the saint is the only one who can recognize truth intuitively or understand divine wisdom in a flash. A whole life can be spent in seclusion, in meditation, in contemplation, and while many incarnations seeking wisdom, but not until a certain thing happens within a person does the soul perceive truth, an awakening which comes through the experience deep in earth in matter. Here then is the demonstration that we should not think that the worldly man or woman lacks the capacity to see direct into heavenly consciousness. And however strange it may seem, Jesus chose the worldly in preference to the so-called holy, and to them he imparted the secrets of the mysteries of heaven. And in reference to the conversation between Jesus and the woman at the well, here was the point at which the woman revealed to Jesus her readiness to receive the living water. Jesus always concerned himself with inner things and not with outer appearances. And when he said, having asked the woman to give him water from the well, whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, he was referring to the astral desire body. It is also significant that the first person to arrive at the tomb of Jesus was a woman, and the other disciples might not, might not like a woman necessarily, being the first to carry the glad tidings, but in the new age of Aquarius, it is the woman aspect, not woman necessarily, but the mother aspect of the spirit life, which recognizes the master. In other words, this means that it is the loving, tender, gentle, feminine attributes in either a man or a woman which will first behold the Lord Christ. In the ancient days, there was always a perfect balance and union between the divine masculine and divine feminine. And we hope in the age of Aquarius, there will be worship of these two aspects and born of their elements, the divine son, the Christ, the cosmic Christ, born in the heart of humanity. Amen.